This is lesson 8-2, which is law of sines and law of cosines. Our essential question is how can you use the sine and cosine functions with non-right triangles? So everything we've done so far with trig has been right triangles, but we know in real life we have a lot of triangles that are not right triangles. So law of sines and law of cosines is a way to find missing sides or angles of triangles that don't have a 90 degree angle in them. So here are our functions. So these are basically formulas that we're going to use to evaluate different things. So what law of sine says is that sine of angle A divided by side A is going to be equal to sine of angle B divided by side B, which is equal to sine of angle C divided by side C. So this tri triangle right here kind of illustrates how we need to set up our triangles when we're solving. So you'll notice that angle A opens up to side A, and you'll notice that angle B opens up to side B, and angle C opens up to side C. So that's very important that we set it up that way. Now law of cosines um, is A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A, depending on what side you're looking for. So, and then we can also use law of cosines to solve for a missing angle if we need to. So this first example we're going to look at um, is technically one that could be an ambiguous case, which we'll talk about in example three, because here you'll see we have a side and a side and an angle. So we learned back in geometry that with our triangle congruencies that side side angle, it spells a bad word or could spell a bad word, um, then it's going, it could be potentially an ambiguous case, which we'll talk about soon. But this is set up as a real life scenario, so we can go ahead and solve it like we would normally. So it says Nicholas is walking along an obstacle course that begins at point X. He starts going straight on the path. It takes a wide right turn onto a second path at point Y and continues for a thousand feet before turning onto the final path at point Z. What is the angle between the second path and the final path, point Z, round to the nearest tenth of a degree? So what we would do here is we're going to use law of sines. So notice that we have angle 32 opens up to side 1,000. So we can set that up as sine of 32 over 1,000. And then we're trying to find the sine of, so we're trying to find angle Z. So we're going to find the sine of Z over 1,200. So then what we're going to do is you're going to make sure that your calculator is set to degree mode. Or if you're in Desmos, you're going to go up to the graph settings and make sure it's set to degrees. And then we're going to cross multiply and divide. So we're going to take 1,200 times sine of 32, divide it by 1,000. And we're going to get that sine of Z is equal to um, a decimal that we're going to kind of just leave because we want to round at the very end. But we get, I don't need parentheses there. Oops. So we get 0.6359. So what we want to do to find angle Z is we're going to take the inverse sine of 0.6359. Um, an easier way to make sure you don't round until the very end is to just take the inverse sine of 1,200 sine of 32 over 1,000. So just take that value that you're going to calculate anyway and put it into... Um, Desmos or put it into your calculator so that way you're not rounding along the way and missing the final answer. So angle Z turns out to be 39.5 degrees. Okay, so the next part of this, so this, this one we have angle, angle, side. So this is angle, angle, side. So we don't have to worry about the ambiguous case on this one like I'll talk about in a minute. Okay, so um, this says Amaya is flying her Zeppelin balloon. The string is 90 feet long and the angle of elevation to the balloon from the ground is 60 degrees. Across the park, Rochelle is watching the balloon, which is between Rochelle and Amaya. The angle of elevation from Rochelle's feet to the balloon is 75 degrees. How far apart are Amaya and Rochelle standing? So I'm going to say this is little k. That's what we're finding. Round to the nearest tenth of a foot. Okay. So in order to find side K, we, we need angle K. And that's possible to find because we know a triangle adds up to 180. 
So we can take 180 minus 75 minus 60 to get what angle K is, which is 45 degrees. So this is 45 degrees. So then I can set up my law of sines. So I can say sine, I'm going to use the side and angle that I know. So sine of 75 over 90 is equal to sine of 45 over K. So we're going to cross multiply. So we're going to take 90 times sine of 45 divided by sine of 75. And on this one, we don't have to do the inverse because we're just solving for a side. It doesn't look like a K. Let's try that again. Okay. So when I solve this, I get 65.9 feet. Okay. So there's that one. So now understanding the ambiguous case. So we talked about the ambiguous case is going to be when you have side-side angle, okay? So this situation here, so we have triangle CDE. So side CD is eight, side DE is six, and measure of angle C is 30 degrees. So you can see how that setup is side-side angle, and we're trying to find measure of angle E. So this angle right here. So what we have to be careful of, so we can, we can approach this just like we have approached the other ones. So um, we can say sine of 30 over 6 is equal to sine of E over 8. So if I cross multiply and divide, I'm going to get that angle E is 42 degrees. So here's the thing, that works, okay? If we were to have done that and it gave us an error in our calculator that we couldn't take the sign, that would be a signal that we don't have a triangle, that a triangle can't be created with that situation. But the ambiguous case is you could also have, this is kind of tricky to draw, but here's my CD, E. So here's 8, this is 6, and this is still 30 degrees. So you could have that side, because we don't know what angle E is, angle E could also be obtuse. So the way that we find angle E to determine if there's going to be a second triangle is I'm going to take 180 minus 42. So that first angle that I found up here. And I get 138. Now a way to check this, since this is law of signs, is you could do sine of 42 and sine of 138, and you'll see that they equal the same value, okay? So that means that that angle in there is 132 degrees, and then we just double check to make sure this works. So we wanna find angle D. So I would take 180 minus 132 minus 30, and I get that angle D is 12 degrees, okay? So that tells me that yes, there's a second triangle. Now, you might be asking, how do I tell if there's not a second triangle? Well, let's say I found angle E to be 132 degrees, and then I check to find angle D, and it was like, it said it was negative 12 degrees. That would be a signal to me that there is not a second triangle. So we have to make sure that things are making sense. We can't have a negative angle in our triangle. Okay, and so... Our last example here is using law of cosines. So law of cosines is good when you have side angle side or side side side. So this first example here, we have side angle side. So we're going to find side T. So we're going to use our formula. So it's going to be T squared equals the two that I have. So nine squared plus 17 squared minus two times nine times 17 times the cosine of 65. Again, I'm going to make sure that I am in um, degree mode in my calculator. So then t squared is equal to 240.68, and then I'm going to take the square root of that to find t, which is going to give me 15.5. And our last one is finding an angle. So we're going to draw our triangle. So we have J 
KL says that side J is 15, side K is 13, and side L is 12. So what's the measure of angle J? It just so happens it's asking us for angle J, but I want to make a note that because of the issues that we have had with law of sines being um, that it will sometimes give you the acute angle only and not the obtuse angle, uh, when you're doing, if you switch mid triangle, so like if you start out with law of cosines and then switch to law of sines, um, you have to be careful. So a good rule to follow is always find the biggest angle first because law of cosines is going to distinguish between obtuse or acute angles. So always start with the biggest angle. How do you know the biggest angle? It's the one that opens up to the biggest side. So that just so happens that J is the biggest angle in our triangle because 15 is the longest side. So we're going to fill in what we would for the law of cosines formula. So it would be 15 squared equals 12 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 12 times 13 times cosine of J. So now if we solve this, we're going to get 15 squared minus, oops, minus 12 squared minus 13 squared over negative 2 times 12 times 13 is equal to cosine of j. So you can get that value or you can just put that into inverse cosine and plug that whole thing in. So if you simplify that, you get 0.282 which is going to tell us that angle J is 73.6 degrees. And then you could use you could do that again to find the next angle. If you're solving the triangle and finding all the missing parts, you could keep going using law of cosines, or you could switch to law of sines. But just make sure that you start with the biggest angle before you move on to the next one. Okay, so that is law.